Shalom, shalom, mashpaka. This is Ahamia Ban Yahweh at the Wisdom Praise of Yahweh. Just giving him the highest praise and the esteem for he is worthy of all praise. And um, we're on day five of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. Um, I had to restart, so if in case you're wondering and my candles are out, I had some technical difficulties. I'm out of candles right now. And um, I had to redo this. Um, I was getting phone calls on my phone as I'm doing the recording and just all kinds of things dogs howling, all kinds of just distractions, so I just decided that I'm going to redo it, praise the Most High Yah, I hope all is well with you out there, I hope the Most High has been blessing you from the head down to the soles of your feet, that you have been experiencing Barak in your life, that you have been blessed in your life from the Most High, he sees high and he looks low and he loves his children, and um, this is just a night where we're going to give him a praise, because he is worthy of all the praise, and I don't want to rock crying out for me. I don't know about you, but I want to just give him all the praise and the honor and the esteem. And so, we just give him the praise. Hallelujah. Before we get started, um, we will sound the shofar, and as I always say, whatever petitions that you have, you could be preparing yourself. Um, as I do these announcements, we're going to read a script in Joel. Um, it's in Joel chapter 2. And then we're going to read Psalms 94. And um, we're just going to have a good time in the Most High's Word. Hallelujah. any of you have been experiencing any kind of blessings, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know if you've been seeing any breakthroughs um, in your life from the sound of the shofar, because the shofar is powerful, and the Most High is moving upon the four corners of the earth. So we just want to give him the praise and the honor and the esteem for his goodness. And it's Joel chapter 2 verse 25 is what we're going to do. And basically how the night is going to go is that we're going to finish up and we're going to get to Maccabees. We're going to read chapter 3 which we weren't able to go through last night. And we're going to start at chapter 2 and just do an overview on chapter, uh, verse 53. How Matthew, before he passed, he put his sons in charge and he was giving them scripture encouragement of his forefathers or the patriarchs who have been through various situations. And he was saying with this one had done and how the Most High had helped him through this battle and helped that one through this thing and how he just counted righteousness for various different people that were serving him back then. And this is how we have to build ourselves up, Mashpaka. You see, as Dawid had said that, or Dawad had said that, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to encourage ourselves from the experiences that some of our forefathers had experienced in the word and how they became overcomers. Hallelujah. And this is what the Most High was doing in our lives. You know, he has various people with YouTube channels. Um, just getting in his word is really all you need. But sometimes we hear something and it sparks a thing and it gives us hope and it gives us a desire to want to go higher and so this is what the father was doing with the sons he was giving them that spark and he said uh, to, to, to have this zealousy for the Torah and the zeal for the Torah and they did and it said that they fight 
cheerfully because after he spoke these things to them, they were ignited and they were on fire for the Most High. And that should be our desire. Hallelujah. And so, before we get started on that, I just wanted to say that, you know, like I said the other day, a person that is blind, he doesn't want to hear he can't see. He wants to know why he can't see. And we are Yasharal, we are the light unto the world. And we should have the answers for that. We should be able to show the brother and sister you can't see because there's hidden things. But you once were blind, but now you can see because I'm going to shed some light in his word with you. And his word is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. Hallelujah. And so we're out to share his light. We share his light to bring those closest, closer to draw those near. And also we said was, also I was talking about a time of act. An ally is a time of deceit. The ally of deceit. Time is an ally of deceit, which leads to deception and defeat. Time is an ally of deceit that leads to deception and defeat. In other words, as time goes and goes and goes, I did an example on the fourth night. We tend to start losing facts. Facts start to get distorted facts start to turn into lies because we weren't there a hundred or two hundred or thousand years ago so it causes us to have to dig into our history it causes us to have to seek and search harder but if we seek we will find these mysteries if we ask the most high he will give it to us hallelujah and so i'm going to read joel chapter 2 25 to 32. Then shall I repay you the years that the swearing locust has eaten, and the crawling locust, and the consuming locust, and the gnawing locust. My great army, which I sent among you, then you shall eat, eat and be satisfied, and shall praise the name of Yahweh, your Allah, who has done with you so wondrously. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Yasharal, and that I am Yahweh, your Allah, and there is none else. And my people shall never be put to shame. And after it, after this, it shall be that I pour out my Ruach on all flesh. And your daughter, your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Your old men dream dreams. Your young men visions. And also the male servants on the female servants. I shall pour out my spirit on those days. And it shall give signs in Shemaim. And upon the arrests, the earth. Dom, blood and fire columns of smoke and sun turn into darkness and the moon into dom, the moon into blood or the yarak moon into blood before the coming of the great awesome day of yod he -Wave. and it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of yod he -Wave, Yahweh shall be delivered for on Mount Zion and in Yerushalayim, there shall be an escape, as Yohei -He has said, and among the survivors whom Yohei -He has called, or who calls, hallelujah. We give him the praise for that, hallelujah. Psalms 94. O Yorhe Wafhe, Yah of vengeance. O 
Yah of vengeance, shine forth. Raise yourself up, O judge of the earth. Render punishment to the proud. Yodhe how long are the wrong? How long are the wrong going to exalt? They pour forth words. They speak arrogantly. All the workers of wickedness boast in themselves. They crush your people, O Yodhe Wabe, and they afflict your inheritance. They kill the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, Yah does not see. And Allahim of Yaakov pays no heed. Take heed, you senseless among people. And you fools, when would you become wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who has formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, does he not reprove the one teaching man the knowledge? Yodhe Wale knows the thoughts of man that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man you discipline, O Yah, and instruct out of your Torah to give him rest from the days of evil until the pit is dug for the wrong. For yod heh does not leave his people, nor does he forsake his inheritance, for right ruling returns man to righteousness, and all the upright in heart follow it. Who would rise up for me against evildoers? Who would stand up for me against workers of wickedness? If yod heh had not been my lip, my being would soon have settled in silence. Then I said, my foot has slipped. Your loving committed, O Yahweh, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your comforts delighted my being. Would a throne of destruction which devised trouble by law be joined with you? They band together against the life of right righteous and declare innocent blood wrong. But Yodhe Wabi is my defense and my Allahim, the rock of my refuge, and brings back on them their own wickedness and cuts them off in their own wrongdoing. Yodhe Wabi, our Allahim, does cut them off. Hallelujah, he does cut them off. going to sound the shofar for our freedom. You're going to lift them up. faith and they walked away. Father, you said train up a child in the way they should go, that they will not depart, Father. And we 
pray that you will just do your work. Give those answers who have been seeking for answers. Continue to do a mighty work in their lives. Hallelujah. Do a mighty work in their lives. Continue to be with those who are going through sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities in their body. Be with my Asha. Be with her. Continue to touch her as we sound the shofar. Continue to heal her. Continue to be with those who are going through various situations. They may be looking for a job. They may have just been fired. They may have been um, lost their car due to payment that they weren't able to make, Father. They could have been in a bad accident today, Father, and their car has been totaled out. There's various situations that's going on, Father. Renal failure in the body, heart disease, brain aneurysms, tumors, arthritic pain, liver disease, MS in the body, Just move in a mighty way, Abba. Touch those. Anything that I missed, let them bring it forth before you. We thank you and we praise you for the things that you are doing in our lives. I pray that you will open up the people's eyes as we get into the text. <clears throat> the insight that they receive, that we apply it to our lives. I pray that as this feast of dedication when these eight days are over if you don't come before next year that we will be in a deeper level level and a higher walk in your anointing that we will be walking more circumspectly before you more upright before you that we will be a sadak a sadiq a son and daughter of righteousness so I just pray for all of our Ak, our Akoti, our Atwat, however they pronunciate it, that you would touch all of our sons and our daughters, and our Mishpaka, or our Mashpaka, which is family, to those who are on the outside that are learning still. We just pray that your Malakim commonly referred to as angels, messengers, will move upon your children, giving us messages, protecting us, looking over and after us. So we just pray that you would do a work as we sound the shofar, that the walls of Jericho will pull down pornography, the walls of Jericho will pull down drug addiction, the walls of Jericho, they will pull down gambling, haughtiness, vulgarity, cursing, and not just curse words, but curse words that are idle words that bring down people talking bad about them and idolatrous words that we don't reap what we speak, that we live humble and that we be meek. Baba, this is the time we come before you right now. They said it was 400 years of silence, but the miraculous things that we've seen going on with the Yehudas Maccabee and his family and all the other children of Yasharal, we know that your Ruach had to be with them. We knew that, we know that your Ruach was having them to preserve the word for this day, such as a time as this. And so we come before you right now, just asking that you will move on behalf of our prayers. And those who receive the video, the recording, that they will be blessed from the head down to the soles of their feet. So I'm going to sound the shofar for our freedom. I'm going to sound the shofar for this time of prayer and battle. 
I'm going to sound the shofar not by my power, not by my might, but by the ruach. Hakodash, I declare and I decree each and everything that has been said. You said that we ask anything and we ask it in your name, it will be given. You said we have not because we ask not, but we come asking on this day. You are an almighty one that you shall not lie. You are an almighty one that you do not change. You are the most high Yah that you deliver and save us from any situation that we are in. He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. And so we just lift you up right now and we sound the shofar. Once again, Mashbaka, and we are here to lift up the name of the Most High, and we are here to get in His Word, and as I said, we are going to get into uh, the Maccabees, and we're going to see how Yehudas Maccabee was swinging that hammer and that sword, and we do the same. Every day, we are in a spiritual fight. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the Most High Yah, and pulling down the strongholds of Hasatan. Everything starts up in here, and we must know that. See, when it talks about the heart, the love, the lab, it's the mind. The enemy comes with things in here, and we must know his devices, lest he get an advantage of us. And when I say things, I'm not lifting him up. You know, even Hamashiach had said, um, get thee behind me, Hasatan. 
And he told him, man shall not live by bread and water alone, but every word of Yah that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. And so, a certain spirit, sometimes you have to call it out of what it is. And so, we're not giving him any kind of praise because we know he's a defeated foe. We know that he loses and that we win. And so, I'm going to confirm that when I go back to what we were, um, we're in chapter two and we're just going to do a little bit of an overview. <clears throat> if I have any struggles, be patient with me. It's been a long day and um, it's a lot of reading and I don't have my Asha with me. And so, um, we're going to start at verse 53 on chapter 2. It says, well, I'm going to go a little bit before that. I'm going to go to 52. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? So, what's going on right here is that Matityahu, he was telling his sons, he was giving examples to build them up because he was getting ready to pass on and they were going to have to take this battle on their own. And this is how it is with our Abba. He gives us scriptures to build ourselves up. See, these scriptures are like weights in the gym. You know, we, we work out with them. Every time we're in a situation, we look at a certain... Um, account that had happened in the past and how the Most High delivered the person or brought them out or helped them through it. That gives us hope. This is why we ought, we have to stay in the Word. Those who don't stay in the Word, this is why they, have, they feel like they have no hope. They feel like the Most High is not with them. And um, we have to build ourselves up. Sometimes we have to do it all by ourselves. You know what I mean? But as a family, as a mashpaka, we are to build each other up. We are to sometimes get on the phone when a brother or a ak or a atwat or a akoti is down and encourage them. Read some script or flip some script out of the lip to them and get them up in a pluck and feeling motivated and give them that hope. And see, this is what the Bazora, this is what the Torah and the Bazora, it does. It's good news. It's told news. Hallelujah. So this is what's going on here. It says, was not Abraham found faithful in temptation? And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Yosef, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made master of Mitzrayim in Egypt. Phenoch, our father, or Pinchas, our father, in being zealous and fervent, obtained covenant of an everlasting priesthood. He was the one that ran the spear through some hanky-panky that was going on inside the temple, and he stopped the plague. Yehoshua, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Yasharal, and Kalab or Caleb for bearing witness for the assembly received the heritage of the land and Dawad David for being merciful possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom and Eliyahu for being zealous and fervent for the Torah was taken up into the Shamayim and Hananahu and Azariahu and Mashael, which is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the name that we read in the King James. By believing, were saved out of the flame. And Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of the lions. And thus consider, ye through all the ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. This is what the Father is saying. Fear not. 
the words of a sinful man, and his esteem shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall be not found, because he is returned into the dust, and his thoughts come to nothing. Wherefore, ye, my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men in behalf of the Torah, for by it ye obtain esteem. And behold, I know that your brother Shimon, on his, I know that your brother Shimon is a man of counsel. Give ear to him always; he shall be a father unto you. As for Yehuda Maccabee the hammer, he has been mighty and strong even from his youth. Up, uh, let him be a captain and fight the battle of the peoples and take unto you all those who observe the Torah. So as I was saying last night on day four, we're on day five. Real men follow Torah. Real men try to live out the Torah. And see, this is a process that we do every day and we live out the Torah. Many of people will say, well, you know what? Uh, uh, a real man, he makes six figures. We have all these different things of what a real man is. But a real man right here, he follows the most high Yah. And this is why you don't see many men following Yah. You see more women in congregations than you see men. You know what I mean? And women seem to have a more of a spiritual thing than the men because it's a it's a trap that the the enemy has made that they won't seek the most high he's he's made it to where the women have more of a of a um benefits and things it's set up more for the women it's it's a it's an agenda just put it that way but a lot of men can't see this. They think it's cool to let women take care of them and do all this stuff. And it's an agenda behind it. And in some cases, the men are put in a situation where they can't take care of themselves. They got felonies, they got this, they got that, they got multitude, especially um, our Hebrew. This is what's going on, but there's a there's a way to break this cycle, but you got to know how to break it. Like I said, a blind person don't like to always, he don't want to know that he's blind. He wants to know why he can't see. And so these are eye-opening things that we want to show people to help them to see that we got to be able to get out of these traps that the enemy has put us in so we can see clearly that our ayan, our ayin, it will be open that we will be able to know and that we will be able to see and that we will be able to prophesy. Hallelujah. So he says, take heed also unto you and all those that observe the Torah and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the Torah. So bless them as he was gathered to his fathers and he died 146 year and his sons bury him in the sepulcher of the fathers at Modem and all Yasharal made great lamentation for him. So he was telling all these things to build his sons up because they were gonna to have to take on the legacy, so to speak. They were gonna to have to make this happen. Chapter three. Then his son, Jehuda, called Maccabee the hammer, rose up in his stead, and all the brethren helped him, and so did all they that held with his father, and they fought with cheerfulness. So this is what I was saying. When's the last time have we been faced with an obstacle and 
we attacked it with cheerfulness knowing that the Most High is going to deliver us out of it or He's going to bring us through and just having that confidence. You see, after the Father spoke these words, even though it was a sad time, they attacked this thing with cheerfulness. It says, And they fought this with cheerfulness, the battle of Yasharal. So He got His people great honor and he put on his breastplates as a giant girt, his warlike harness about him. And he made battles protecting the host with his sword. In his axe, he walks, he was like a lion and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey. For he pursued the wicked and sought them out and he burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore, the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled because salvation prospered in his hand. So the Most High was in his hand. He knew that he had salvation. He was living the day for battle to keep the Torah alive and out of the hands of the wicked. It says, he grieved also many kings and he made Yaakov glad with his axe and his memorial is blessed forever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Yehuda, destroying the wicked out of them and turning away wrath from Yasharal. So his act took the wrath off of Yasharal. The people were in fear. They, they weren't going to try to... Um, Yehudas Maccabee was developing a um, uh, reputation with a small number. People were saying, "There's, there's the Most High must be backing this man up," and and so that 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 took some of the um, heat off of the rest of Yasharal because. They, were, they weren't so pressured because they were in fear. The kings were in fear of him, it says, so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth. So he, had, he was building a reputation. And, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Then Apollonius gathered the other people together and a great host out of Samaria, Shamarim, to fight against Yasharel, which thing when Yehuda perceived he went out to meet him. And so, and so he smote him and he slew him. Many also fell down and slain, but the rest fled. So see, this is why you need strong leaders. You need, you need strong leaders around you who are going to be prayer warriors who can give you um, good counsel as we're all in this battle and as we're all in this fight. It says he smote him and he slew him. Many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Wherefore Yehuda took their spoils and Apollonius sword and wherewith he fought all his long life. Now when Sharon, a prince of the army of Aran, heard say that Yehuda had gathered unto him a multitude of company and the faithful to go out with him to war, he said, I will get my name, get, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom for I will go fight with Yehuda and them that are with him who despise the king's commandments. So he's trying to get a name for himself. So he made him ready to go up and there went with him a mighty host of the wicked to help him. <coughs> and, to, and to be avenged of the children of Yasharel. And when he came near to the going of Bet-Karan, 
Yehuda went forth to meet with him a small company who when they saw the host coming to meet them said unto Yehuda how shall we be able being so few to fight against so great a multitude and so strong seeing we are ready to faint with fasting and all this day and you know it says some things only come but fasting see a lot of times in fasting your physical body feels weak but the ruach is strong in you because all of your senses that uh, that the most high has given you in your body to feel and hear from the ruach it's 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 calm it's ready to receive and then he says i'm gonna start a little bit over uh it says against so great a multitude and so strong seeing that we are ready to faint with fasting all this day unto whom yehuda answered it is not hard it is no hard matter for many to to shut up in the hands of a few and with the Elohim of Shamaim, it is all one to deliver with one great multitude or a small company. So as I was saying earlier, little is much in the master's hand. We've seen this with Gideon. We've seen this in a lot of type of situations in battle that the Most High does more with less because he wants to display his power. So people that say there was 400 years of silence, how was this able to happen? We haven't even read the whole story of, of how successful the Maccabees were and, and, and we're getting to that. It says, for the victory of the battle stands not in the multitude of hosts, but strength. And we know strength is the Aleph, first Hebrew Aleph thought. It comes from Shamaim. They come against us in so much pride and iniquity to destroy us out of our and our women and our children and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and the Torah. See, that's their motivation. They know they have no life without the Torah. And so they know that if they fight for the Torah and they lose their life, and it says that he who gains his life, he who loses his life will gain his life. We're going to get to that script. It says, but we fight for our lives and our Torah. Wherefore, Yahweh himself will overthrow them before, the faith, before our face. And as for you, be ye not afraid of them. So we can't have fear. You see, and this is what um, I believe Yehudas Maccabees is telling them. Don't be afraid of him. He was the captain. He has to build up their morale. See, whenever we go into spiritual battle for this temple, our morale must be built up. We can't be around negativity. We can't be around fearful people who's gonna bring down your negativity or bring down your morale by saying, oh, what about this? Oh, you know, and he said it in a very easy way that he could build them up where they could be confident. He says, um, be ye not afraid of them. He says, now, as soon as he had left speaking, he leaped suddenly upon them and so Saran and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them and the going down of bet Karan unto the plain where were slain about 800 men. Of them and the remnant fled into the land uh, Palestine, Palestine. Then he began to fear. Then began the fear of Yehuda and his brethren, and an exceeding great dread fell upon the nations round about them. 
in so much as his fame came into the king and all the nations talked of the battles of Yehudas Maccabees. See, so very few men got the victory, but they couldn't have no fear. I want to read the biggest problem with the king's men was they had pride. And the word says pride cometh before fall. And that is so true. You know, you have a lot of people that are walking haughty and prideful, but it says pride cometh before fall. And the most highest word is true. And it says right here in Proverbs 16, 16 through 23. It says, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? See, their whole motivation was trying to plunder people, trying to take their spoils and to get them to bow down to, to their deities. And they were prideful and, and haughty. And he says, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding, it is preferable to silver. The highway of the straight is to is turn away from evil. He who guards his life watches over his way. And we know that the Most High said that I am the way and the truth and the life, which Hamashiach had said that, but he was the word made flesh. He was the Torah made flesh. It says, the highway of the straight is turned away from evil. He who guards his life watches over his way. Before destruction comes pride and before fall haughty spirit. Better to be lowly in spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who acts wisely concerning the words finds Good, he finds tov. And blessed is he who trusts in Yah. The wise hearted is called discerning. And the sweetness of lips increases learning. Understanding is a fountain of life to him who has it. But the discipline of fools is folly. The heart of the wise gives discretion. So all of these things he was motivated was, was trying to have silver, trying to have gold, trying to plunder people, trying to corrupt people. He didn't have no wisdom. He didn't have no chokmah or no chokmah. He didn't have none, none of that. He didn't have the wisdom of Yah. And he was pride and he was puffed up. And um, where it says right here, it says, um, Then he began to fear Yehuda and all his brethren, and exceeding great dread fell upon the nations round about them, insomuch that fame had came into the king, and all the nations talked of the battles of Yehudas, or Yehuda Maccabee. I could kind of relate to that. There was a time in my life how could I say this? Well, I had got into an incident one time and it was just basically to protect myself. I wasn't trying to be someone that was bad or anything like that. And what had happened was when I was in my days getting drunk and getting high and using drugs and stuff, me and this girl had got into it. Um, we were supposed to meet up at a certain time and some reason she didn't come at the time she was supposed to meet and me and my friend were um getting high and we were just talking and getting drunk and so there was these two groups of people and they called this one group i don't want to say the names but one was a gang and one was kind of like a club and they had like their their um 
forget what you call that when you put their like their 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 affiliation on the walls they had it tagged so as me and my friend was sitting at this place we was like you know what we should we should because we didn't we didn't like the, we didn't like this one group of people and um you know when you do stupid things when you're young and you're getting high so what i did was i took some spray paint and i crossed out the name of this one group and then i put the name of this underneath the gang i put their name i crossed their the gang's name out and i put their name underneath the gang it's like you cross somebody out and then that's going to make them retaliate on this other group and um these guys were like some punk rockers or something like that. But the other ones, they were like a Mexican like gang. And um, I kind of knew, I knew both of them. I knew, you know, people in both of them. And um, make a long story short, what had happened was since this girl that I knew, we had this situation where we didn't meet up. I was drunk and stuff and I told her, I said, yeah, I said, well, you know, since you didn't come over here and blah, 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 and me and so-and-so, so-and-so, we was over here and, and so we crossed out so-and-so and then we, we put their name under there and da-da-da-da-da-da, and, you know, and I just told her the whole story. So she was mad at me because I was mad at her. So she went and told, told them what I had did. So they both, <laughs> both groups came to my parents' house I was, that I was living with. It was a good thing their room was like in the back. And I went into bed and I passed out. At this time, I, my, old, my second oldest brother was living with me. He was an OG at the time, but he cleaned his life up later. But you know, as we all know, sometimes you still carry some of that residue when somebody picks with you. And so I'm sleeping and I hear this tapping on my window. Boom, 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 boom. And I wake up and, you know, I'm, I'm like in a daze and I see this girl screaming and cussing and giving me the finger and saying, yeah, and we're going to get you. And for da, 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 da. so she turned both of them on me. She told them what I did. And so they wanted clarity. So they like calling me out. So I'm looking out the window and I see like three car loads of people and they standing outside their cars probably was like about. I don't know, 12 people. And um, <clears throat> anyways, I get up and I start to go outside. And it was hot in the summertime, so we had our windows cracked. And my brother was sleeping on the room next to me. And I peek in the window and I said, come on, Mike. I said, it's time for us to, it's time. We're going to have to um, touch and such, such and such. I can't say the words I said. And he's like, huh? He was like in the days too. So as I said, I come from a family of drummers. Everybody played drums in my family. I had one brother that really wasn't into the drum. Um, and my brother didn't have nothing to grab. It's kind of funny. <laughs> but he come out with a, a, a cymbal stand, a chrome, a chrome cymbal stand. And they were looking at me like, why is he walking to the window when we all out here in the street waiting for him? They didn't know what I was doing, but I was telling my brother, I said, come on. I said it real low too, you know, and they look him like, was he talking in the window? So my brother came back and he, he knew that I could hold my own. He was just there for like backup. So I came walking down to the front of the guy. And one thing my brother told me back in the day, he said, you know what? Cause he was in and out of prison. He was an OG and my other brother. And um, he said, if you ever get locked up in the pen, he said, they'll always try to put some little punk in front of you. He says, you have a choice. The dude that's in, the dude that's behind him, he's either making him try to punk you, knowing that he's behind him. You have a choice either to take him out or take the one who's trying to punk you out to get your respect. And um, that was something that stood in my head. So as soon as I went out there, when I was walking down there, you could see everybody holding chains. They was holding bats. They was holding knives. They had bricks. They, I, I can't even remember all the weapons. But I know one thing. My brother said, drop your weapons. And he came walking out with that chrome cymbal stand. 
and nobody didn't drop nothing. He said, I said, drop them weapons. And nobody didn't um, drop anything. By that time, I was probably like about 10 feet in front of the closest one in front of me. And then um, he lunged kind of like he was going to start running out there. And then all of a sudden you heard, clink, 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 boom, 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 boom. I mean, you heard all these sound effects from the weapons that they was carrying. I didn't even know they had that many. They just all hit the ground. And so then I walked up to the dude, the one that was talking the most mess. He said, yeah, yeah and you did this and da-da-da. And this is the reason I'm bringing this up because the story was my niece had brought this up and it, it just shows how you catch a reputation and you ain't even trying to get that. And my niece goes around, she says, yeah, Terry, uh, yeah, uh, 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 so-and-so, tell, uh, tell him how you kicked the pants off. Tell my husband how you kicked the pants off this guy. So the story was I kicked the pants off this man, but I didn't really kick his pants off like that. But that was what a reputation I got started. But I was so mad and I thought about what my brother had said. I threw a forward side kick at him and hit him in the face. And the force pushed him through him so far back that when he hit the ground, it peeled the pants off his butt. And he was pull, trying to pull himself off the ground and pulling his pants up. But they pulled almost down to his knees. And that's where the thing came about. He kicked the pants off him. But after that had happened, dudes was like vominos. They took off and they got out. There was, there was weapons still on the ground that we was able to collect. They took off out of there. And that was not a good thing. I'm not saying this as, as, a, as a thing. I'm just giving an example how reputations, it was a bad thing for me because every time I went somewhere, people wanted to challenge me because they heard of certain things that I did. I never was a person that always looked for trouble or nothing like that. I couldn't be motivated just to start trouble without, you know, there was times I didn't have no drugs though and I was, I was crazy. But aside of all that, it was a, it was a reputation and I didn't like that. You know, I didn't like going places and people staring at me hard and trying to pick something because they wanted to get a name for themselves. They wanted to build a name off of me. I wasn't trying to build no name. I was just basically out there trying to trying to protect myself. Now, it was stupid what I did. I should have not did that. This is why I encourage people to not be getting high and using drugs because your mind is not doing the right things. And so all that said and done is, Yehudas Maccabees got a reputation. And so when he got this reputation, we're gonna see how this king started trying to hire all the help he can get. And so it says, and all the nations talked of the battles of Yehuda. Now the king Antiochus had heard these things and he was full of indignation. Wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even very strong army. He opened also his treasure and he gave his soldiers pay for the year. So he paid, he, he, had, he had paid them just to be on standby. So he would know he have them. He said, um, commanding them to be ready whatsoever he should need them. Nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed and that the tribes in his country were small, he caused, he, he caused of a dissension and a plague which he had brought up upon the land and taken away the Torah, which he had been of old time, he feared that he should not be able to bear the charges of any longer, nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before. For he had a bound above the kings that were before him. Wherefore, bring greater perplex in the mind, he determined to go into 
Persia, there to take tribute of the countries and to gather much money. So he left Lysias, a noble man, and one of blood royal to oversee the affairs of the king from the river of Parath. The river of Parath unto the borders of Mitzrayim and to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. Moreover, he delivered unto him the half of the forces and the elephants that gave him charge of all the things that he would have done as also concerning them that dwelt in Yehuda and Jerusalem. So he had tanks. You see elephants back then, that was tanks. So he was getting his tanks ready. Doesn't say anything about Yehuda's Maccabees having anything like this. But he was getting everything he had because Yehudas Maccabees had made a name for himself. 35. To with that he should send an army against them to destroy the root out of the strength of Yasharal. And you can't destroy. The most high is the root. You can't destroy the root of the most high. But in his prideful mind, this is what he thought. To destroy the root out of, out of the strength of Yasharal and the remnant of Yerushalayim and to take away their memorial from that place and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. So he was planning on selling their, their land and dividing it. He had all kind of plans. And it says right here, it says, and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. Stranger danger, stranger danger. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. See, there was a lot of stranger danger. This is what we're dealing with today, Mashbaka. We're dealing with stranger danger. It says, so the king took half of the forces and remained and departed from Antioch, his royal city, the 147th year, and having passed the river of Prath, he went through the high countries. Then Lysias, Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Doriamus, Nicanor, and uh, Georgius, mighty men of kings, friends, mighty men of kings' friends. And with them, he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Yehuda and to destroy it. As the king command, so they went forth with their, with all their power and came and pitched in Yemen and a plain country. And the merchants of the country hearing the fame of them took silver and gold with much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Yasharal for slaves. See, so they were trying to use their money to buy us. A power also of Iran and a land of the Philistine joined themselves unto them. Now when Yehuda and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them they said unto another let us restore the decayed
fortune of our people and let us fight for our people and the, and the sanctuary. Then was the assembly gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Now Yerushalayim lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out the sanctuary. Also the trodden down and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place and joy was taken from Yaakov and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore, Yasharel assembled themselves together and came to Mitzap over against Jerusalem. For in Mitzap was a place where they prayed aforetime in Yasharel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and ashes upon their heads, and they rent their clothes, and they laid open the sepher of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. See, what they were doing was they wanted to take the Torah and they saw, it says, it, they sought to paint the likeness of their image. They wanted to put their own images of the Torah. This is what we have going on today, Mashpaka. We have these revised versions. We have where it should say, Yah, we have God there, where it says, um, Yah, we sometimes see Master there. Over 7,000 times, where it says, Yah, where it says, um, Ruach, HaKadosh, it says, Holy Ghost, where it says, Shalom or Shalom or Shalawam, we see peace. The list goes on and on and on. So it says it right here. It says, and they laid open the sepher of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. So we would be reading and we would be using idols instead of the real um, Most High. That we will be calling on the powers of deities rather than the real powers of the Most High. It says, And they brought also the priests and garments and first fruits and tithes and the Nazarene. They stirred up who had accomplished their days and they cried with a loud voice towards heaven, saying, What shall we do with these? Whether should we carry them away? For your sanctuary is trodden down and profane. And your priests are in the heavenlies and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What thing they imagine against us, you know? How shall we be able to stand against them except you, O Allah? So you see, sometimes this is what we have to do to the Most High. We have to say, there's no way I can deal with this in my flesh. Yah, you are the only one that can stand for me. You have to put all of your trust in him. It says, how can we be able to stand against them except you, O Allah, be our help? You see, you have to call on him for help. Then sounded they with shofars, and they cried out with a loud voice. You see, so we see they cried two times in the beginning of 50. It says, they cried with a loud voice towards Shamaim. Sometimes you have to cry towards a Shamaim. See, they knew where their help coming from. They come from the windows of Shamaim. And then it says, 54, Then shouted 
they with shofars and they cried with a loud voice. And after this, Yehuda ordained captains over the people. And I have a script I want to go to. It's um, Yehoshua 6.20. And it says, and Yitro was shut up, and and Yitro was shut up tight because of the presence of his sons of Yasharel, none going out, none coming in. And Yodewave said to Yehoshua, See, I have given Yitro and its sovereigns, mighty and brave men, into your hand, and you shall go around the city, all the men of battle, going around the city, once. Do this for six days, and let the seven priests bear seven shofarots, shofars, of the yobalim, which is the smaller one. It looks like a a yod of a modern. Before the ark, and on the seventh day, go around the city seven times while the priests are blowing. Let me see. Are we are we on the right thing? No, I'm on the wrong one. Okay. It says, And the people shouted, and the priest blew the shofarot, and it came to be when the people heard the voice of the shofar, and the people shouted with a loud voice, that the wall fell down flat, and the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they lay captured the city. So this is why you always see me emphasizing the shofar so much. So when they sounded the shofar here, they were preparing themselves for battle. And it says, after this, Yehuda ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. But as for such as were building houses and betrothed women and were planting vineyards or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return every, every man to his own house according to the Torah. So everything was done perfectly by the Torah. You see, like if a man has a has a has a woman that's 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 pregnant in the in the days of the Torah, and um, he's not to go to war. I believe it's in Numbers and it's in Shemot. And so, he was very very thorough about how he was going to do this. And so, um, he also said those that are fearful. You don't want people that are fearful when you're going into spiritual warfare or battle. You need people that are steadfast, people that are persistent. It says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you need people that are going to have an effect. You need people that are going to know that they have won battles in prayers, that they had victory in a lot of different areas. You don't want to bring in somebody who's going to cause doubt, who's going to bring about fear, who's going to mess up your unbelief of what you are praying for, that your faith is based upon the one who you should believe in. Hallelujah. And so he had everything in order. And and um, that's, that's why when you hear a lot of people that say, when someone died and and they're in heaven and they're 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 uh they're on the streets of gold and they use a scripture you know i go away and prepare a place for you that where i am there you may be also and they will use that and they don't understand that this is going to what this is a little bit of what this is you know if a, if a man is newly married and his wife is just given birth or if she's going to be given birth what happened with the man before he marries or he goes to build a house so when um so so he's preparing a place for her it's a it's a hebraic idiom and this is what mashiach is doing for us 
when he's saying that, he's saying that I go away to prepare a place for his bridegroom. And a lot of people think they take that and they say, oh, he's in, we're, he's in heaven or she's in heaven and they're on the streets of gold, you know. The most high, he's prepared a place for them, which a lot of them don't say the most high. And so this is, this was Torah, what he was doing. He didn't, you don't pick fearful people in armies or in military, in battle. You don't take uh, uh, a woman um, that's newly married with her husband or anything. And so this is what he was establishing. He was establishing an order that the Most High says, but as for such, we're building houses. See, because they were building houses, some of them were preparing a place for their soon-to-be wife. And had betrothed women or were planting vineyards or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return, every man to his own house according to the Torah. So they camped and removed and they pitched upon the south side of Yemen. And Yehuda Maccabee said, arm yourselves and be valiant men and see that ye be in readiness against the morning that ye may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Nevertheless, as the will of Allahim is in Shamayim, so let him do. So he put it all in the Most High's hand. And this is what I like right here. I have to go back up to here. Where the fearful ones, he didn't want them to fight. You see, love casts out all fear. I want to go to... Um, First John 4, 16 to 21. And I was asking myself, what is perfect love? And I really believe this is what the Most High Yah is showing me what perfect love is. Okay. Yachanan, first Yachanan, commonly referred to as John. 416 to 21. It says, And we have known and believed the love that Elohim has for us. Elohim is love. And he who says, they, he who stays in love stays in Elohim, and Elohim in him. By this, love has been perfected with us in order that we might have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear holds punishment, and he who, hold, he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love Allah and hates his brother. He is a liar. For the love, sorry, for the one not loving his brother whom he has seen, how is he able to love Elohim whom he has not seen? And we have this command from him that the one living, loving Allah should love his brother too. So when it says that love casts it out all fear, I see that it's the love of the Torah. You see, Matitia's family, Matthias' family, they had such a zeal and a love for the Torah. They didn't only love the Torah, but they loved their people. They went out of the way 
to save their people. And this is what I believe that the Hamashiach is saying. He says that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear holds punishment. And he who fears has not been made perfect in love. It says, we love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love Allah and hates his brother, he is a liar. So see, they love their brother. And we know that Mashiach, Hamashiach, is a Torah made flesh. And so their whole desire and purpose was for the Torah. They had this desire. And then he says, and he who stays in love, they stay in Allahim, and Allahim is in him. So this is why we stay in the Torah. And we know that Hamashiach is the Torah made flesh. And then I want to go to... Um, uh, Matitia 16.25 It says, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he gains all the world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For if the son of Adam is going to come in the esteem of the father with his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his works. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death at all until they see the son of Adam coming in his reign. So we can see right here when Hamashiach says, whoever wishes to save his life shall you lose it. And whomsoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. But what profit a man if he gains all the world and he loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? So, we lay down our life not having fear. We lay down our life because we have assurance of the word of the Torah. You see, that's what he's showing me with not having fear. is not having that fear no matter what happens to you standing on the Torah and loving your brother so hard that you will lay down your life on the Torah for your brother. To keep the Torah because he is the Torah made flesh he is the word made flesh that is the revelation knowledge that I am getting out of this is that that is that perfect love that perfect love that casts it out all fear so when you have that perfect love you cast out all fear because you know that he's going to resurrect you He's going to resurrect you. Hallelujah. So we have pretty much um, concluded this. I had a long, exhausting day. I know I stumbled here and there. Um, I hope that it helped you in some kind of way. Um, but the shofar is a powerful thing. Mashpaka. And we're going to find out there's other accounts with the shofar in chapter 4. And how this just keeps getting deeper and deeper and better and better. So remember that perfect love is having that Torah so deep into this temple, so deep into this soul, so deep into this body that... You have no fear. The fear is no more. Because you're so in love with the Most High that it cast out the fear. He says, how can you love your brother who you see and love me who you can't see? So 
when you have that love for your brother to share the Torah with him, to comfort your brother when he's down, to lift him up in script or your akoti or your aqua, whatever the situation is that you are concerned for one another, that is that perfect love that cast out all fear. And you could just do like this and someone could say, I'm getting ready to execute you. Bow down to this idol. And you have that love of the Torah so deep and so strong. Shoot. Fire. There's no fear. Hallelujah. Well, I'm gonna play a song when I close so I till I close out. And um So yeah, that perfect love is awesome. And in Hebrew, love is in the ancient Ahava. Some say Ahava, but the Bet is, or the Bat is more ancient than the Vat or the Vet. The, the V is a more modern. So it would be Ahaba. And you have the Aleph, which we were talking about, which is Yah strength. And you have the Ha, which is breath. And then you have, in the Ha, you also have the window. And we can see that they were calling on the Most High. They, we heard that he was calling on strength. Right? We also heard that they were looking up to the heavens and calling on to the heavens where the H of the Hahaba is the Ha, which you get the breath and you get the window. And it takes breath to go through the shofar, to reach to the Shamaim, to call upon the Most High that he open out the window and send the window down. And you have the bot or the bait, which is his house. If you take the continents. And that's what they were trying to save. They were rededicating his house and we rededicated this house because his Ahaba cast out all fear. Hallelujah. So I'm going to play this song. Our dance and praise is all for you, Most High Yah. Yahweh is in his set apart temple. Let all the earth be silent before him.
Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Give a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Um, keep us in prayer. Keep my wife in prayer. And um, just um, tune in for tomorrow night, y'all willing. So I say shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. And shalom, shalom.